Welcome back to CBS Mornings and a lawsuit against the Department of Defense bringing new attention to an issue we've been reporting on for years now. Veterans being exposed to toxic chemicals at bases overseas. The focus of this lawsuit is the base known as K2. It's in Uzbekistan. At least 15,000 service members have passed through that base. It was in support of U.S. missions in Afghanistan. And now veterans are suing the department, saying public records do not explain the high rates of rare illnesses that they're experiencing. For several years, our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Harridge, has been speaking to some of these service members, many of whom revealed rare cancers and other serious illnesses. All of them passed through K2, and all of them are now looking for answers. And Catherine Harris joins us now from the Pentagon this morning. Catherine, good morning to you. Good morning, Tony. These veterans and their families told CBS News they served with honor, and they never imagined they'd have to sue their own government for answers. He said to me, my head is about to explode. I can't talk about this. I can't talk about this deployment. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is happening to my husband? I don't, I, did, I cried. Kim's husband, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Brooks, was among the first soldiers deployed overseas after 9-11. She says he never showed fear until one day in 2002. And he said that he had had a briefing and he says, I was just told I was exposed to some very bad stuff. And the thing that I remember from that is I heard uranium. Tim had just returned from Karshi Khanabad, or K2, a former Soviet military base in Uzbekistan used by American forces to hunt al-Qaeda terrorists in neighboring Afghanistan. In 2020, a CBS News investigation documented evidence of toxic conditions at the base, including soil saturated with jet fuel and warnings about chemical agents and radiation. After deploying to K2, Tim was diagnosed with an aggressive brain cancer. It was a battle. It was a battle. Tim Brooks died in 2004, leaving Kim a single mother of four. Was it at that point that you wanted answers? I never stopped wanting those answers. It's the color that gets you. Kim enlisted the help of her daughter, Megan Brooks, a supervising attorney at Yale's Veterans Legal Services Clinic. I think more than anything, my dad really valued um, doing what you can to take care of others. Um, and that's sort of how I see my own work. Exhibit B. With the help of Megan's team of law students, K2 families sued the Defense Department this month for records about toxic material at the base. Military doctors told us many others had been affected, that Tim wasn't the only one. The lawsuit alleges the missing information prevents K2 veterans from obtaining accurate medical diagnoses and adequate treatment plans. And it is Honestly, shocking and unconscionable that the requests have just been ignored, bounced around the Department of Defense, not prioritized. What difference will the records make? It's the difference between knowing uh, what happened to you and being in the dark. Military surgeon Gordon Peters was deployed to K2. He says he witnessed the potential health hazards firsthand. We found this field scattered with enriched uranium, partially enriched uranium, yellow cake. I mean, it literally it was just aerosolized, and we took Geiger counters out there, and it, they lit up. These images shared with a K2 veteran appear to support Peter's account. Multiple sources say they were told yellow cake was identified at the base, though there is a dispute about its potency. So this has been known to the Defense Department for 22 years. Yeah, so... Um... It's tough to see it. It actually really is. Following a spill at a base bunker in 2003, CBS News has learned an environmental team at K2 found traces of hydrogen cyanide, a poisonous chemical agent, though its use was unclear. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, then a commanding general, was briefed on that incident, according to records reviewed by CBS News. Senator Richard Blumenthal has voiced support for the lawsuit and promised to seek accountability. I will personally take this fight and this issue to Secretary of Defense Austin. For Kim and Megan, their fight is about countless others. There are veterans right now, like Mark Jackson, who is in the hospital with 
his fifth or sixth in surgery for an infection that just will not go away and they don't know the cause of it. We need answers. Our veterans need answers now. A defense official told CBS News environmental health site surveys are already declassified and studies into the health effects are ongoing. The official called the yellow cake claim a mischaracterization. The official did not address the 2003 briefing to General Austin about hydrogen cyanide, but pointed to other reports that did not identify chemical warfare agents. A spokesperson for the secretary said care for veterans and service members is a top priority. Tony. Boy, you know, you serve your country overseas, you come back, you think you have your health, and then this seems to come for you. Uh, these allegations are very serious, and I know you'll stay on top of it. Catherine, thank you very much.